Today's video is sponsored by Lethal Gaming Gear. Man, the fall and winter release schedule has been bananas. And while I've tried to get to everything that's come out, I'm still a one-man show over here. Despite a very vocal minority in the comments on recent mouse reviews that suggest that wired mice are no longer valid, a Twitter poll I ran the other day suggests differently. So today we've got five wired FPS mice we're gonna take a look at that I just didn't have time to get to on the channel for individual detailed reviews. This is not a top five, it's not a best of year end roundup or anything like that. So if your favorite mouse is not on this list, don't freak out. This is purely five mice that I received, got to spend some quality time with, and wanted to get some commentary and some coverage out to you guys. Now, purely by coincidence, these are all symmetrical and they're all lightweight, just so you know that going in. So we've got the Ducky Feather, the HSK, the MM720, the Roquette Burst Pro, as well as the Pulse Fire Haste from HyperX. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out five interesting wired FPS mice that didn't get dedicated reviews on the channel. Now, full transparency, these were all sent out by their respective brands, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. Boy, that one really fried some people's heads last time, huh? Just because we're talking a lot about shape and grip style today, as a reminder, my hand measurement is 20.5 by 10.5 centimeters. I play primarily Call of Duty, currently running 800 DPI with an in-game sensitivity of six and I normally play fingertip. Starting off with the MM720 from Cooler Master. This will look familiar if you're really old school, like you've been gaming for a while on PC. It's based on a classic claw grip mouse shape, the Spawn or the Zornet. It's one of those shapes I don't think got mainstream love, but if it worked for you, you loved this thing. I like it a lot. It's almost like circular. If you ever get like a pinch in your hand because you have wide hands and your mouse is too narrow, this is a great shape. It takes a little getting used to because your hand is spread out kind of wide, but you pick it up fast enough. The weight is crazy low at like 49 grams. Big PTFE glides underneath, no DPI button on top to get in the way. The cable is plenty flexible here to run without a bungee or a paracord, even though it's so light. Triggers have a fair amount of post travel, but I don't notice it in game and I can do some work with this mouse. The side buttons are kind of bumped out. It's a unique shape. I really like them. It becomes really second nature to find them. They are a little mushy, so be aware of that. Honestly, really the only complaint I have about this mouse is the Cooler Master feeling build quality of this thing. It's a shame too, because I really like their shapes. They just all kind of have like this budget feel in hand, which at 50 bucks, I guess it kind of is a budget mouse. It's a really unique shape versus the entire market. It's really fun to use. If you claw or fingertip, this is absolutely one to check out. Just know that it's a hard pass for palm grip. On the topic of unique shapes, we have the HSK from G-Wolves. This is a pre-release copy. I've had it for a really long time. It's a fingertip only mouse, so much so that there are no side buttons at all. I've often heard fingertip players say they don't use side buttons anyway. I don't get that at all. I fingertip 90% of the time and very few mice leave me in a position that I can't use the side buttons. This is not a completely unique idea. The M1K from Zound Koenig has done this before with a slightly different shape, carbon fiber material, 23 grams, and a pretty insane price point. So this is like a budget take on that concept. The shape here is weird. It's a straight up wedge. I have a real love-hate relationship with this mouse. The front end is so low. It's such a small frame combined with the lightweight. It feels like I'm using a stylus to play. Like it's dead on accurate and fingertip with little to no effort. The hate part comes in that I'm a run and gun player, usually sniper and knife. So not having side buttons really impacts my game. It throws me off big time. I use stim shot often and I slide a lot to get around on the map. For my personal play style, it's too much of a sacrifice. Unless I'm using something like the Digma Rays where I have multiple thumb buttons on hand, then it's a hard maybe. Even if they just gave us one side button and made the tensioning really high so you didn't accidentally actuate it, I'd be down. Because of the heavier feeling paracord and the 38 gram super light weight of the body, the cable actually puts some resistance. So bungee is mandatory, preferably paracord mod if you're gonna run it. So TLDR, it's nasty accurate, but it comes at a cost. It would seem like the Hottie S would be the next natural recommend from this mouse, but it lacks the low front end height and actually is one of the few mice where the thumb buttons aren't positioned well for me in fingertip. I don't know what it is about this shape in particular, but I play consistently better with it than the Hottie S. Wouldn't really surprise me at all if G-Wolves was using reviewers to get like a live action interest check before they decided to put money into rolling these out completely, which they definitely should, but with at least one thumb button. 
Got to get in a word from today's sponsor. We'll be right back. Today's video is sponsored by Lethal Gaming Gear. Based in the US, Lethal is your source for performance PC gaming needs. They offer custom paracords for a wide variety of mice that include 3D printed stress reliefs. No more heat shrink, no more flames, no more inconsistent installs. They also keep a full stock of replacement micro switches, skates from CorePad, Tiger Arc, and Tiger Arc 2, as well as CorePad grips for the hottest mice in gaming right now. Plus, they stock all the top mouse pads from X ray Pad in multiple sizes in the US and ready to ship out. In Inventory is always up to date with custom solutions for even the newest mice in the market. Offering one day processing on orders and one to three day shipping anywhere in the continental US, they can get your gear in your hands fast. Need something you don't see on the site? You can always contact them and request it directly. When you're ready to elevate your game, don't get heated, get lethal. Click the link in the description below. Next up is the Ducky Feather. This is the only mouse on the list today that has lefty support. It's handled much like the Viper in that the outer buttons are disabled by default, something you can swap in hardware. Even if you're not using them, there's nothing to stop them from depressing though. So if you find that distracting when you're playing, heads up. This is the safest shape out there. It literally may as well be an FK or a Viper or a Model O. If you find any of those frames to be slightly too big in any dimension, this will be a good fit. I like the coating here. Whatever it is, it's really similar to the Viper. No oil, no fingerprints. That goes a long way with me. It's also purely hardware, meaning lift off distance, polling rate, DPI, etc., is all handled on the mouse itself. It's 65 grams. It does have holes, but only partially and only on the sides. They're really spaced out, so you can't really feel them. All you feel is this textured section here. It's also exceptionally well built, let alone for a lightweight, just as a mouse in general. This is a good claw grip for me. For fingertip, I have to be too far back on the frame to get any use out of the front side button. The side buttons themselves feel pretty mushy, spongy, like old EC style spongy. You can tell there was some debate about glides at corporate as well because the frame has an inset to fit larger glides, which are included, but the mouse comes stock with these old school and telemouse pill shaped feet. Scroll's got a good feeling depressed, but it's really loose. Like if you like or need sharp tactility on your scroll, this is a pass. Triggers feel incredibly solid here. Barely any pre or post travel to speak of. Nice, crispy. They've got Huano 50 mils under them. I like that. They also sit really low. The whole mouse itself feels agile. The stock paracord is acceptable, but bungee probably. Stress relief exit has a pretty high angle to it. At 65 bucks, it's a practical, well-rounded, solid performer. A real Honda Accord. It's not particularly attractive. It doesn't do any one thing exceptionally well, but the build quality is one of the best I've seen. It's a good all-around performer, and it has left-hand support. If you're not one to play the field or chase the latest, greatest mouse, then chances are you're not even watching this video. But if that's you, I feel like this is a really good pick. If you can get past the pretty generic looks, this mouse doesn't do anything poorly, and it feels like it's built to last a really long time. Onto a mouse that really surprised me, the Pulse Fire Haste from HyperX. If you're not gonna be original, you better at least execute all the details well. That was my first out of the box impression of the Haste. Forgettable, the last in a long line of companies saying, hey, we also have a lightweight mouse. And then I played with it and it's, well, it's solid, it's just damn good. It's 50 bucks, it's taller than a lot of the other offerings. So while I can fingertip it, Claw feels more comfortable. Those of you with medium to small hands will probably find a palm grip here as well. I just can't call it. Like the Feather, there's not any one thing that's particularly noteworthy here. It doesn't have the same caliber of build quality as the Feather, but a lot of mice don't. It's full of holes, though not on the side panels, and it feels really solid. The triggers have basically zero pre-travel and just a bit of post, but nothing that I've ever noticed in game. The triggers are low, but not like crazy low. They just trigger almost instantly. The scroll's got a nice tension to it. The press is medium firm. Side buttons are really firm. No way you're accidentally hitting these. You can rest right on them, no problem. Again, very minimal pre-travel here, but definite post-travel, which again, doesn't really bother me in game. The cable feels shockingly close to a newer glorious ascended cable. The glides are four small PTFE pill-shaped glides. I mean, there is nothing standout or noteworthy about this mouse, but that doesn't stop it from being a really solid performer. The only thing that sets it apart from the mice on the list today is it's taller. I've seen it compared to a Hottie M, but that's not exactly it. It's smaller, more aggressive slopes, both front and rear. I think it's just the positioning and the layout for me. The size and shape just feels like it's made for my hand. The triggers are really fast. Everything feels like it's where I need it to be without thinking about it. I would not go so far as to say that this beats out mice at higher price points. And this is the one and only copy I've ever used. So I can't speak to quality control or consistency across different copies but it feels built really well. It's a great way to spend $50 on a mouse, and yes, arguably even better than the other great way to spend $50 on a mouse. Last up today, we have the Burst Pro from Rocat. I don't know what it is, but a lot of you have requested a review on this mouse. 
I can see why. The shape is awfully close to an S2, just a touch bigger, but not quite S1 size. And of course, it's lightweight, it's 68 grams. So if you got with me a year ago, it would basically be my perfect version of a gaming mouse. The S series is such an amazing shape. This mouse feels really well built also. There's a hex frame underneath the top shell, which you can't see when the RGB lights up. The glides are very generous here as well. Big, both front and back, thick PTFE. These have their Titan optical switches in them as well. They do feel pretty fast and they have a very similar feel and sound to Razer's latest opticals as well. Like really, really close. There is a fair bit of post travel on the triggers that I do notice when I'm quick scoping. I really like the scroll here as well. Rolls easy, depresses easy. Perfect for swapping the knife and hitting a melee. Grips on the side are textured with like this gloss raised hex print. I like it. The only thing that looks kind of weird for me and it's purely cosmetic is this giant DPI button that says DPI on top. I don't know why it's even there or why they feel the need to label it DPI. It just looks clunky versus the overall look of the rest of the mouse. Cable again, pretty close to an ascended cable, good stress relief. The coating here is not a big winner for me as it does show oil and fingerprints, but I mean, it's basically an S series with lightweight, better scroll and a better cable for 60 bucks. I guess probably the big takeaway for me today and for 2020 mouse releases in general is that if you can't find a wired FPS mouse that works for you, it's kind of a you problem. Like we're really spoiled by the amount of stuff that's available in the market today. All of these mice today performed really well and I feel totally confident recommending any of them with the exception of maybe the HSK and only because it's missing side buttons. But far and away, the two I had the most fun with were the MM720 and the HSK. It's not lost on me either that they're the lightest out of the group today. The build quality may not be exceptional on the MM720, but what it offers is so unique, I'll give it a pass at that price point. It's a really high performer for me. And I am like an absolute beast with the HSK. It is such a fun little mouse, especially for sniping, but to really embrace it as a main would take a lot of adjustment for me not having any side buttons there. Jury's still out on that one. I might still. No word yet on final pricing and availability. It's definitely an oddity, but if you don't use side buttons or you're a fingertip person, definitely try to get your hands on one of these. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I am moused out. As we head into the end of 2020, I'll finally be getting you that studio tour that you asked me for on every video. It's coming out very soon, I promise. We've also got some monitor coverage both on the gaming side and the productivity side as well. And audio guys, I have not forsaken you. We've got the Sennheiser HD 560S that I've been gaming in for the past few weeks. We'll be taking a look at these very soon as well. As always, links down in the description for everything that we talked about today. Any questions at all, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. <laughs>